So we last looked at how to create a slab. We created the slab using the magic wand and then we offset it so it sits, the edge of the slab or the outside of the slab, sits under the edge of the timber frame rather than the edge of the brick. Now there were some things that I hadn't already fixed and that was deliberate. So I hadn't already fixed the relationship between the interior wall and the exterior wall. We can see that that's not really working very well, but it was very important that I didn't change the reference line on the outside of the wall in order to make this work. Now I'm still going to ignore the fact that these walls aren't perfect at the moment and come back and fix them later, just in case you were wondering. At the moment we're gonna stick with slabs and in this case we're going to split the slabs or separate the slabs so it actually relates to our project properly as it should in a construction situation. So what I wanna do here is change back to my reference with my ground floor and understand what do I need to do. So we can see that there's a garage here, laundry, bathroom, ensuite. And we can see there's an FFL, finished floor level, RL, it's sort of funny that it says both of those, it really doesn't need to, five comma, I think that is, one zero zero. And then this one says, or dot, five, dot zero one four. Now it doesn't really matter whether it's a comma or a dot, they sort of effectively mean the same thing. So in this case, they're saying the RL is five meters and 14 millimeters, which is a really awkward number, but we'll explain why that is soon. And this one says five meters, 100 millimeters. So where's the strange, weird 14 come from? So if I go five one zero zero minus five zero one four now you note that i'm doing this in millimeters not meters so this makes sense and i press equals what's that that's a brick course right so that's a brick plus mortar so the reason why the garage is set down one brick is it just makes a lot more sense in terms of the relationship between the garage and the living room spaces now that's actually less important in this type of a building if this type of building is entirely brick veneer, but it's much more important when we're talking about a cavity brick building. And because actually in reality, or uh, as the drawings suggest, that this building was supposed to be partially full brick or cavity brick in the garage, and we end, may end up making more of this building full brick or cavity brick, therefore working to that brick dimension, so in this case a brick and a mortar joint, or another way of saying that would be lowering this particular part of the slab down 86 millimeters makes a lot of sense. Now, how do we do that? We can split our slab. So we can select the slab, go to our split tool. We can also find that under edit, reshape, split. And in this case, I want to split the slab here on the garage side of this stud frame wall. Click define the line. So in this case, I was drawing a quick line to define the uh, direction I want to split. And then if we look down here, it says click on either side of the split line to keep elements selected there. So it's basically saying once I click on one side, that'll be the element that is selected. In this case, I want this to be the element that's selected. So I clicked on the left hand side. It really didn't make much of a difference though. I can then go into the setting and I'm going to subtract or lower this slab by minus 86, so I can just say minus 86, or I can go to elevate, which of course we can also find under edit, move, elevate, and I can here say minus 86. Uh, that's my preferred method. My preferred method is to say minus 86 rather than going to the settings and type in 86, because sometimes I might want to progressively subtract, subtract, subtract for multiple different things. So let's say for instance, I wasn't making a, a stair properly. Let's say I was just making a stair out of slabs. I might want to then subtract multiple elements, 180, and then subtract different elements, 180, and then different elements, 180. So I'm creating a, a stair with a riser of 180. It's a little bit complicated, but uh, I will show an example of that later. All right, so now we've got the garage just slightly separated. And just so this makes sense, we're going to go into the cover fill and we'll change this just to be a bit darker. And so we can see that that looks different. That's all I care about at the moment, that it just looks different. So that's reminding us that they're two different slabs. I also want to reduce the height 
of these slabs. Why? Because we see that these are tiled spaces. Another important understanding is that they have a fall. So we want to be able to drain the laundry, the bathroom, and the ensuite. We need water to be able to drain away, and we need it to therefore be higher in its relationship where the doors are. And we're not just having a concrete slab, we're also going to be adding a buildup of sand and cement, and then we're going to have tiles over the top of that. So how do we do that? It's exactly the same, but in this case I can't just use the split tool. So in this case I'm going to use the subtract tool. Now, it's a bit of a question for the builder, perhaps, of where we want to split this, or where we want to reduce the height. Do I want to cut the whole space out, including the edge, or do I only want to reduce the area inside of this space? Well, I don't really want to have a lower floor area here, particularly if this floor was going to be exposed concrete. So I actually only want to change or reduce the area inside of the walls. I don't need the trace reference to do this, but sometimes it's helpful just to see what I'm trying to do. So I'll select the slab, click on an edge of the slab. I'm now going to go subtract from polygon. And because I have this as a full polygon, I could go magic wand and click, but we see that it's not working. Why is that? Because of the reference plane. It's working off the reference plane, and it's currently not distinguishing between the ensuite and the bedroom space. So in this case, I'm going to use my rotated rectangle instead, and I'm going to be thoughtful straight away, not do this to the plasterboard, but do this to the timber frame. Click, click, and then bring that down. I want, I want to intersect that with here. Now we see that that's not a great place to intersect because it's not a, a reference plane necessarily, but click and that's now in the right place. Now I don't want to have no slab, so we currently see there's no slab, I just want a different slab. So I'm going to pick up the settings of the same slab and this time I'm going to draw a new slab. I know I'll use a two point rectangle just because it's faster in that case. And now I need to go into the settings, and I want to say minus 50 millimeters in this case, or minus 45 millimeters, perhaps. And again, I might change the fill. I could use a percentage fill, or I'm more likely just going to use a standardized type of tile at the moment, just to represent that and make sense. Now I need to do the same thing for here. In this case, because these two slab areas are interconnected, it makes a lot of sense to reduce them both together. So I'll do it the same way. In this case, I'm going to use the two-point rectangular method instead of the rotated rectangular method. I'm going to cut out that area, pick up the settings. I'm holding down Alt or Option to pick up the settings, and then I'm going to draw a new slab from the same point. And we see in this case, it's slightly different because this wall now needs to be set down an additional 50 mil or 45 mil. So now we have the main slab, the garage slab, and three wet area slabs. Now again, at the moment these are only being represented as basic slabs, so it's not actually 100% correct. We're going to eventually need to change this to a composite slab, but at the moment that's sufficient for what I'm trying to do, and then we're going to add more detail as necessary, and then explain what's happening. Now these dimensions are no longer relevant, so I'm going to select these dimensions and delete them for now, just so it's not messing up my drawings. I could just select all dimensions and delete them, but I need to first check to make sure that I don't have dimensions anywhere else on the page that that's going to negatively impact. So the way that I did that, just again to clarify, uh, Control Z to undo, select the text tool, Control A or Command A, that's going to select all of it. Sorry, <laughs> I selected the wrong thing. The dimension tool, Command A, Control A to select all the dimensions. Now I've selected all the dimensions, I can press delete to get rid of those. Now we have slabs and we have walls. In the next video, we're going to have a look at how to add a roof over the top of this house.